All right, so welcome back. So I've been figuring out how I want to do this one. I've done more than a few takes so far, dumped those, and it's taking too much time. I'm sick of it. This is going to be the take. So this review is sort of like a continuation of my Spartan Acrobus review. So watch that one if you want. It's not really required because I'm just going to give you a quick rundown right now. So Spartan Blades is a decent company. They charge way too much, and their folder lineup has more misses than hits. That's basically the gist of my last one. But overall... I think they're just a mixed bag right now. Nothing's really changed all that much, but this time I have their flagship model on the table right now. This one here is the Spartan Blades Harzy folder. It's the 2018 special edition with the compass engraving. So I bought this one while I was still on the fence about the company as a whole. It's the most expensive model that they make, and this one here is upgraded too, so it's not exactly cheap at all. I didn't pay as much as retail, and uh, it was sort of close. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys here. I mostly got it because of a whole shipwrecked theme going on here. I'm a sucker for that kind of nautical stuff. I didn't really know what to expect from the actual knife though. I unboxed it and when I got it in hand, it just really made me go wow. And I'll tell you guys right now, it's not easy to do anymore. When you get as deep into a knife game as I am, it ends up taking more and more and more to really impress you. But, uh, but if some of their knives out there are hits, this one here is a home run. I liked it so much, I bought it again and again and again so you can kind of tell right now i i have something i i kind of like this model right here but i'm going to focus mostly on the one i carry the most right now which is going to be this full dlc version right here i like it so much because in all honesty this is one of the best design knives i've handled in recent memory i'll tell you right now bill harsey the guy behind this design the guy whose signature is right here on the blade that man deserves every award and accolade he's ever received. This guy designed something outstanding here, and he's a hell of a knife maker. If you know anything about him, you did not need me to tell you that. The guy's pretty much a living legend. So this is a Bill Harsey design made by Spartan, and as usual, Spartan didn't pull it off perfectly. I'll be sure to point out where they fell flat, but overall here, it's more good than bad. So Spartan is basically doing their usual thing, namely just borrowing from the big three like they normally do. So that's going to be Chris Reeve, Hinderer, and Strider, if you guys can see that. There we go. Now it all fits. So yeah, basically borrowing from the big three, and you'll really see that as we go along. Because this thing, it feels damn near perfect in hand. It's kind of like they took the best parts of the Sebenza and the and the uh, uh, XM18 and fused it together with a bit of that Strider DNA right here added in for good measure. So when I do a review, I'm basically walking you guys through my mental checklist. Like when I get something new, this is what I think about when I'm checking it. And one of the first things I check is actually the ergonomics because a good knife, in my opinion, needs to be good in hand. Saber grip on this one right here, it's basically perfect. It's just, it's not just me saying it's good, it feels ideal. Like, that gymmed thumb ramp right here really helps keep you in place, and you really get the most out of that blade right there. Like, you get a lot of control, you feel like you're in control of it when you're cutting. That jimping right there, I'll close this up, close this one. It's actually perfectly done. It kind of reminds me a lot of what you might find on a hinderer, and it's a bit more aggressive than that, but it's not overly aggressive. Like, when you grab it, it'll grab you back, but it won't really tear you apart. You also get great support in the back right here. Like it curves slightly. It's not enough to really make uh, it uncomfortable or anything like that. Or really force you into like a pistol grip. But it's enough to really make a difference. At the bottom, those two double finger trolls right here. These things are just placed perfectly. Front one over here even has a relief on both sides. Like here and here. And... It's just one of the best handles out there. It just melts in hand. Like, I pick this up and the entire time I'm holding it, it just feels like it belongs there, even in the left hand, too. And a big part of that, just how well done that lock bar is over here. Not too many people talk about it this way, but that lock bar is actually a huge part of the ergonomics. Here, it's perfectly even with the front side. I see it right there. And those two diagonal grooves I talked about earlier, that makes that front choil basically flawless in hand. It breaks the corners over here and gives you a real rounding effect when your finger's here. Like, there, when you get this in hand, no corners, no blockiness, no awkward voids. 
It's just well done and it's just beautiful on hand. It's even got a hinder lock bar stabilizer mounted on the inside. You can see it peeking out right there and I think I can show it right there. But yeah, anyways, it's mounted on the inside. I don't really think this knife really needs it. It's, um... It's not designed that I would really think has a lot of lateral lock bar movement, like it's not really going to move too much this side. But I do like that they went the extra mile here. The other thing is, just look at the smart way to give you access to that lock bar right there. Like they put a wide chamfer on this side and left this one with the, with the usual small uh, chamfer right here. So you basically get in there, you catch on that corner, it comfortably unlocks the thing. One of the few things that strike me as an obvious miss though, is this right here. Like you check the end of the lock bar, like right over here. You see that it terminates into these two very pointy corners. Like every once in a while I grab the knife and it grabs me back and not in a good way. So it kind of stabs into my finger a bit. You can actually see it on camera. It, I can't say it happens very often, but when it does, I really feel them. It's not really a hot spot. You'll never really feel it in hand, but it's just when you brush up against it, getting into a grip. So it's more of an annoyance than anything else. And it's small stuff like this that, I don't know, it just really makes me wonder. Like, let's say this thing lands on your table it's, and you work for Spartan. You're basically a QC guy. This knife comes up. You pick it up. It feels a bit prickly. And if you have working hands, you'll pick up on this pretty fast. If you had a hand file, you could fix this in a minute. This corner right here isn't a crucial part of the lockup. You can easily grind off this little bit right here. This left the factory and this ended up on a $500 knife. I can't say I'm really impressed by that. And I don't know, it seems like I'm, I'm being a bit harsh about a little thing like this, but at this price I'm allowed to be harsh about it. It just feels like it skipped a step in the process. Like I said, it just doesn't really impress me. It's not enough to ruin the, the knife or ruin the grip, but it just needs to be called out. Moving on, though, hammer grip. Now, this one right here has some issues. When I use a hammer grip, I really need to put pressure behind a cut. That's why I'm holding it like this. So it pushes the blade this way and levers over here and pushes the handle in that direction. So where does that force end up? It ends up right back here. And you can kind of see what's back here, too. The jimping isn't the bad part, it's this relief right here. The jimping extends onto a relief, the chamfer goes on that jimped part of the relief. And you can kind of see how sharp that thing is right there. Like, the jimping isn't... Jimping itself is good, it's just, it's good because it's so wide. This thing's so thin that you could sharpen it, you could bring it to an edge if you really wanted to. It's honestly horrible if you hold it the way it's meant to be held. Like, if you actually have your fingers in these two finger troils right here. Then just, you just feel it kind of digging in right here, kind of cutting into your finger. It's not going to break the skin, but it feels like it does. So you just end up feeling that each time you're making the cut. It's not ideal. I wish they could have done something differently. But it's not really enough to make it unusable. Like you could kind of choke back a little bit, kind of put it in between two fingers right here. But then your uh, front two fingers kind of land on the peaks right here. So it's not really ideal. You can kind of ch choke forward too, but then it's not really too comfortable down here. And then this thumb stud right here is kind of digging into your thumb. I don't know. It's just, it's not ideal. I wish they would fix it. I wish they would do something a little bit different right here. But next up, um, edge up grip. This one just feels great. You land on all that jimping that you thought was useless before. And if the way this thing just kind of curves back here, it kind of cradles your palm. And that jimping really does keep you in place. Reverse grip, and this is where it really starts to have a bit of a strider-like feel to it. Like it has this flat area at the end, kind of like on the SMF right here. I'll actually put them side to side. I'll make things a bit easier. You can kind of see that right there. I kind of followed almost the same kind of um, lines. So you can... Like I said, it just has a bit of a Strider-like feel, but the thing is, Striders tend to have a bit of blockiness to them. It's not like bad or uncomfortable, but it just feels a bit weird if you put your thumb over like this. Like you feel this part right here, you feel these, this line right here. But notice what's missing on this. On this one, they curve the back a bit more, and then they scallop the inside slightly. So. This one, it feels a lot more like a Dior BBN than it does like a mixed Strider. Strider. So it's basically perfectly done. It, it's 100% a good grip. 
just locks you in, lets you, it just keeps you there, lets you know you have a good grip. And I just like a lot of what's going on here. Just ergonomics wise, everything here is, uh, it ranges from great to passable. And two minor changes right here, like this part of the lock bar and this relief right here, change those two things and I would say it's absolutely perfect. In general, this thing just feels like it's a, bring them back out, just feels like it's a Sebenza that's been styled and designed like an XM18. And I mean that in the best possible way. I mean, it picks up where each design is lacking. Like it locks you in like a hinderer while also being as versatile and all purpose like a Sebenza. It's a great example of what you can do with, when you actually move away from a neutral handle. And since I mostly use Sabre Grip uh, most of the time, I would take this over a large 21. I'm not saying a 21 is bad in hand, I'm just saying this thing is better. It also just has a feeling of solidity to it that the XMs have. And that's not exactly a coincidence. Because the angle where I think this one borrows the most from Hinderer is actually this one right here. You can kind of see that the blade stock and like the overall uh, stock thickness of the handle it's almost exactly what Hinderer uses. Like, it's a slimmer knife in this department. Like, it's less tall than the XM right here. But it still kind of has that same feel to it. And that's for good and for bad. So, if you ever used an XM18, you'll kind of notice that it has a pretty thick edge to it. Like, it's designed to be a tough edge. This thing here kind of borrows that. It might even be a bit thicker. So, I know it's designed to be a tough edge on this one as well, but I just don't really think it. the knife really needs it. I will say it always cut everything I needed it to, but sometimes it just took more force to make the cut than I really think is necessary. So as a result, this thing out here is just not really the best slicer. It feels like it's missing some refinement, like something this design really should have. I'm not usually the one to really complain about stuff like this, but I just feel like there's some disconnect here. Like, this isn't a design that needs to be as rugged as the XMs. Like, I'm not seeing external stop pins, Teflon, and texture G10 on this one right here. It looks like it was intended to be an all-purpose knife, not strictly hard use. I do like the blade stock on it because that contributes to ergonomics because your thumb's all the way up here. But I do think a more aggressive grind, like what you might find on a Sebenza, would actually suit the knife a lot better. It's okay as it is, but I do think there is some room for improvement here. Just put this away. So blade on this one though is DLC coated CPM S35EN. It's in this pretty standard drop point shape with a small swedge up top. It kind of reminds me of a drop point Sebenza in a way, which is probably why the grind kind of th throws me off now that I think of it. But it's nothing too special about it, but I'm just not a big fan of this part right here. It isn't really sharpened all the way to the end. It has a small gap right here, and that space right there with the gap is just another place for the material you're cutting to get caught up in. I guess it does allow you to get a finger up here, but you can tell pretty fast it's not really designed for it. It's not comfortable in the slightest, and I would just call this area right here dead space. It's not really a problem in use. You learn pretty fast not to start a cut back here at the dull part, because the edge starts right about, give me one second, about where my thumbnail is right there. So yeah, like I said, you would learn pretty fast not to start a cut back here. But this part right here just feels like an oversight. Like I get why they did it this way, but I just wish it was either comfortable and used or sharp all the way to the end. As is, it's basically a maintenance issue. Like you go and sharpen this and it'll just recurve over time as you kind of take away material. And just as a tangent though, I think this design would actually look pretty decent with a recurve if it started off with one. And I just have to say it, part of me wishes this thing was recurved to begin with. And a funny thing though, Spartan loves putting recurves on a bunch of their knives. And in every knife they've recurved, it just really didn't go with the design. This, this one right here, I think this one could really pull it off. I'm not asking for one of those lazy ones they've done in the past where you just grind into like the straight part of the blade right here and just call it a day. That's lazy in every way. I like a recurve that gives rather than takes. Like one that gives you more material out here rather than one that takes away from what's already there. So I think a nice proper recurve on this one would look pretty sweet. And the one time I think they should have done it, they didn't do it. 
I mean, it has the space for it anyways if you look inside the frame. And it's going to have one anyways as you use it, so why not make it a feature? But enough about that, back to the blade. Like I was saying before, this one is DLC coded S35VN. It seems almost identical to what you might find on a Strider DLC coating. Like when it's brand new, it'll have that soft blasted feeling to it, but it loses that and smooths out pretty fast. Like after you make your first pass through like some thick cardboard or something else that's rough, it'll just go away. It'll just kind of smooth out. So this one right here has seen a few months of honest use. Like I've been carrying it around. And it's not a hard user by any means. You won't find me jamming this into a tree anytime soon, but I do feel like I've used it enough to really get a feel for it. You can even see some wear on mine right here. Not sure how well it really shows up in the light. I'll move it around. Hopefully you can see something. But, yeah, you can kind of see the wear on here, but nothing really reaches the metal. So the coating actually stays on pretty well. Holds up better than most. I'd say about as well as the Striders. And on the blade are these oversized thumb studs right here. I see them right there. They're very well sized and they're much easier to get a hold of than what you might find on like a Hinder or like a Chris Reeve. It's just a better thumb stud in general. You can easily get a grip on it, you're not going to slip off of them. And they're just perfectly placed. Like the action on these are top notch. And part of that is just because of how well placed the thing is. It's basically built for easy flicking. And the thing is running on phosphor bronze as well. I'm not sure how well I can show this off. You can kind of see it right there. But the pivot assembly kind of reminds me of the 21s, where it's like, where they have one washer that's way oversized on the front and a normal sized one on the back. I mean, there are no like pockets drilled out for grease or anything like that, but just the whole size of the washers, it just reminds me of a 21. And it makes the blade more stable, so no complaints there. Move back to a frame, and the first thing you'll see are these strange, is this strangely oversized pivot on the front right here. It's a Harzy design touch. It kind of reminds me of, John, of a John Gray design. It takes a Torx T10, if I remember right. I used to not really like it, but I've grown more neutral about it over time. Screws in the back right here. They thread straight into the standoffs, and the standoffs right here are not shouldered. So I've heard some complaints about that, but I honestly don't think it's as bad as they say. Because the screws themselves are actually cone-shaped before they go down to the screws, or the threads. And... They kind of taper down there and the frame is countersunk to, to fit that cone exactly. So the act of tightening down the screw actually aligns the frame to the center of the hole on the standoff. And with three of these standoffs in the back, it's actually giving you some decent locating, locating points. I mean, it's not the strongest system out there, and yes, I would prefer shouldered standoffs. I also think they let you get higher tolerances, but that's a different thing. But do I think this system would ever cause me any real issues? I would say not in my lifetime, I think it's strong enough. And that's not to say don't improve, I just don't think that the issue here is really a real issue. Like, I think it's more theoretical and kind of completely overblown, actually. But yeah, moving on though. The frame on this one that I use the most, it's DLC coated just like the blade. And remember what I said about um, DLC having a soft feeling to it? The handle is the same way. It gives me that blasted Sabenza handle feeling to the frame. I think it adds something, like a little bit of comfort on a user. On those engraved ones, you kind of see what really drew me to the knife. You kind of see that um, these right here. This is where I think they take another um, page out of Chris Reeves' book, except here I think they knock it out of the park. Because I finally found a company out there that understands that they're able to add things to the lock side of a knife. Like, I'm so tired of seeing those unique graphic Chris Reeves and Ferrum Forge mid-tex, where you get this beautiful show side right here and it's just nothing on the back. Like, it's just plain. It feels like a wasted opportunity every time. On the Harzies, they always have something engraved on the back. Like, whether it's the same mirrored design or a small quote or something like that, you always have something there. So it always feels like they kind of went the extra mile to give you a bit more to your knife. It also makes the design look a bit more cohesive, too, because you, in some of those Chris Reeves, you get it's like plain blasted on the front and then on the back, and then the front's satin finished with some kind of engraving. It, look, it just looks off. It looks like they don't belong together. But yeah, anyways. So 
like I said, just makes it a bit more cohesive. And it's not that big of an upgrade either to go up to a special edition, which is what they call their engraved models. Like you start off from a base model, it's a fair chunk of change at like 65 bucks. But if you start from the DLC version right here, it seems like more of a value. Like you, for only 30 bucks more, you go from this to this. Where they sat in the, fr the frame for you, sat in the frame for you, engrave it, two-tone anodize it, and they do a good job too. I think it really does turn it into something a lot more interesting. Gives it a lot more personality. So on some of the special editions, they even upgrade all the hardware for you. Like all the standoffs and screws on this compass one right here, they match the frame. And uh, like the filler tab and the clip too. And while we're here, let's actually talk about that clip. Because I do like the way they pulled it off. Like if you look at it right here, it's probably closest to a hinderer clip. In terms of just length and uh, just size and everything like that. It's even canted in much the same way too. Like it sits at about the same angle. And that angle might not seem like it makes much of a difference, but it actually does a lot. Like I have this SMF right here, I carry it somewhat regularly, and the thing will always want to hang perpendicular to, to your pocket seam. Now on most jeans where it's like the pockets go like that, that's fine. But if it's something like a diagonal pocket, it'll want to sit like this. It's a bit awkward in like slanted pockets. Like it just wants to sit diagonal. On these two down here, just no such problem. It'll always sit against the back. But strangely enough though, if you go to grab the Spartan from your pocket, it'll feel a lot more like a Strider than it does anything else. Like you feel like you have a real secure grip on it, like with those raised screws on both sides. So, and the other thing is, I guess it kind of makes sense too, because if you put them all side by side, you kind of see that the back here kind of follows the Strider more than it follows the Hinderer. And you notice how on these two on the sides, the clips are a lot more centered. Whereas this one is a bit more off to the side right here. Just because the frame's a bit slimmer. It's not a big problem, but it is a small issue in some grips. Like sometimes when you grab it, you kind of do feel it right here. But as a clip though, I do have to say it's done pretty well. It does its job. It presses down pretty hard. But um, it lands on a smooth area right here. So it's not hard to get into or out of pocket. In general, this thing's just great in pocket. And it's especially since the knife is somewhat slim, it just carries very well. The only issue I really have with it is just, I wish it had a backspacer. I'm I'm really tired of seeing this flow through construction thing everywhere. And one thing that's really annoyed me over the years on a lot of different knives is actually this. So you see on the blade is safely tucked away this way, like there's no way to actually like touch the tip or the edge or anything like that. But not this way. You can see right here, you can see a blade right there, you can see the edge, you can see everything. So it's not really a big deal, since I don't really see anyone else, com anyone else complaining about it, but it does annoy me when I have this in pocket, it sits like this. The edge of my shirt can get in there, I've had like headphone cables get caught in there. Like, I just don't need my knife to cut anything when it's closed. And I just don't want the edge to really touch anything when it's folded either, because that's when it can do some damage. But like I was saying, I don't see anyone else complaining about this, so I might be alone here. But it's the main reason I prefer backspacers that wrap around the tip right here. It just blocks access to the blade when the thing is closed. And just one more minor complaint here. On a normal DLC coated one, uh, I switched them out. So uh, why the hell did this knife come with a stonewashed clip and a blasted filler tab? Like, I'm going to open this thing up for you. Do you see anything else on this knife that's either blasted or stonewashed? Neither do I. They both fell completely out of place, so I replaced both of them. I swapped it for a DLC clip and a Spartan and a satin Spartan logo filler tab that I think matches better with the other satin hardware. Well, let me kind of show you what I noticed when I did that. Just give me one second here. All right, so now you've seen the fullest extent of my editing skills. Kind of hard to do this behind the camera. I mean, it's magic. Of course it's magic. Of course my hand's magic. Each time I cut it, it heals on its own. If that's not magic, I don't know what is. That's the true meaning of Christmas. Okay, it worked. That's enough stalling. So, uh, let's see. This edge right here. You kind of see that right there? So, that, it just looks it just looks bad. It looks like someone cut out the side of this filler tab with garden shears. 
with garden shears right here. True, it's normally hidden and you'd never really see it, but come on, how did this end up on a $500 knife? I'd be disappointed if it was on a $100 knife. Like, you ever take the tab off a hinderer? You'll see that it's well machined on all sides. This filler tab in general is just a whole lot of ugly. Like, this tab here, it just looks like it's badly fit to a front slab half the time. It just looks lazy. And same for the clip as well. You kind of see it right here. Do you see the gaps on the side right there? So, there's a huge range where this clip can sit. It can be anywhere from up here to down here. When I first got it, it was all the way down here. So then I unscrewed it, pushed the thing back up, tightened it again. And then it's much better in hand when it's not resting on the lock bar because it's farther like centered on the frame. But you guys ever move a hinderer clip? You know how they come, uh, where they come clipped for like tip down and you switch it to tip up? There's a small range where that can sit. Have you guys ever taken the clip off a of Chris Reeve? Those things only sit one way. And I like to believe that's because you paid for that kind of attention to detail, like for that kind of finish work and for those levels of tolerances. Like you pay more for this right here and you get gaps like this. You get a clip that can be all over the place. It's a small thing, but I like to think those small things matter. And I don't know about you guys, but I expect more out of my 500, bu 500 bucks. And I'm not even done yet, because let's get back to that filler tab, shall we? Like... I was saying how it looks badly fit and how it just doesn't really sit right. You can kind of feel it when you tighten it up. And just bear with me, it's a lot harder to do this behind a camera than you might think. Come on. T8, by the way. Torx T8. Okay, that was a lot of work for something I don't even know if I can show you, but you can kind of see right here. As you screw this part in, it kicks out the other side of this right here. So as you tighten this, it pulls this part of the filler tab in and kicks this part out. So you kind of feel it right here. There's a ledge right here. Don't know if it's even focusing. But yeah, like I was saying, it kind of pulls away from it. You feel it right here. It feels lazy. And uh, the other thing is, on some of them right here, like this one, the entire thing is lifted off. Is that done on purpose? I don't know. And at this price, that's a problem. That's a big problem. I mean, part of it might just be because it only has a single point of attachment, whereas some of those hinderers right here have two screws. But even on a hinderer filler tab, this is actually a steel flame one, but it only has one filler tab. It rises up slightly, but not nearly as much as that. It's not as dead flush, but it's not as bad as this. Like, this thing just, it just feels bad. Okay, so that filler tab is just a symptom of a much bigger issue here. So you guys know I like to get multiple knives for a review. Uh, I forgot to mention it before, but two of these actually aren't mine. They're borrowed from a friend, but I have owned four in the past before. But um, anyways... I've had enough of these to say without a doubt, but nothing on this damn knife is consistent. Like, centering is all over the place. It's never that bad, but... Let's see. This one here, off to the front. This one here... Off to the back. This one is off to the front again. This one here is off to the back. Again. So, now let's talk about the lockup. Because take a look at this. Each one of these locks up differently. About maybe, it's hard to see behind the camera, let's see. About 30 to 40% on this one, and that actually hit my camera. Okay, this one's about maybe 20 to 30%. This one right here is about maybe another 30 to 40. And this one right here is about 60 to 70%. But what you can see is that actually three out of the four here have a slight bit of blade play. It's a very slight bit, but it is there. And on two of those, it completely goes away after you push the lock bar in, uh, after you open it. On one of them, the play stays there, regardless of whether or not you push it in. So there's just no consistency to a lockup here. So let's look at that full DLC one again. This one has the best lockup out of the four. Like this one locks without any blade play. 
even has the right amount of lock stick to it. And lock stick in moderation is a good thing, that's a rant for another day. But anyways, back to it. This one here, it does this. If you open it lightly enough, boom. Does this really matter? Not really, it'll never affect you in honest use. You'll never really open it up that lightly normally and any normal opening, like this right here, makes it rock solid. But the thing is, I don't like seeing, let me see, I don't like seeing this on $1,000 Shirogorovs, and I don't like seeing it here. But the difference is, those Shiro models, they do it with consistency. Their machining is so accurate that even a small quirk like that is in, let's say, for example, every F95 that they've made in the past 10 years. Every single one does that. I have not found another Harzi that does this. And a the key word there is consistency. Now let's talk about the action. And you guessed it, each one is different. Each one has a different feel to it. The detents are all slightly different and the pivots have a varying degree of smoothness to them. And um, just so you need me to say it, each one of these is tight. Like no side to side play when it's locked, no side to side play when it's unlocked. That's how I keep all my knives if I can help it. But look at this. This one here has a tight, solid feeling action with a firm detent. My friend's knife over here, you want the flag? This one has a very light detent, but it drops shut. This one here, stays mostly where it is. So these two are basically on opposite ends right here. With the compass ones kind of like somewhere in the middle. So it's hard to believe that these two on the ends right here are the exact same model from the exact same year. Like, both of these are great actions. I'm a bit partial to, partial to a DLC one because it has a better detent, but both are great. I would be happy with any of these. But my point is, they feel completely different. And part of this leaves me feeling like I have no idea what exactly I'll get if I go out and buy one right now. Like, there's a small range to everything on this one. Like, everything from lockup to centering to action to fit and finish. Like, while this might not ever cause a real issue, I still like to think that consistency matters. Like every Harzi I've had has been 100% safe. It's been 100% usable. But the thing is, I just wish they were at least more consistent than your average mid-range production company. I'm kind of in a weird spot right now. Like I really want to say something, but I'm not really sure what to say, but every Harzi I've handled has honestly been a good knife. But those Harzis are more inconsistent than those old Striders out there, but they're not really going for that whole fit and finish, don't matter type approach. That's not really their thing. They're not marketing themselves like Strider or Emerson or something like that. They're not saying beat the hell out of the knife and then send it back when it stops working. I'm not saying they won't do that, but that's not their marketing MO. They're, they're definitely aiming to be the next Chris Reeve, but I just don't really know about that either. Like, they couldn't be farther from Chris Reeve in terms of build quality, refinement, and even design philosophy. But at the same time, they're charging higher prices than any of the big three. And price is something I've been mentioning this entire review, and I think that's where things stop making sense. Like, it's $460 for a plain stonewashed Harzi. It's $495 for a full DLC one, that's why I kept saying $500 knife. And $525 for a special editions. I don't see it. I honestly couldn't tell you where that price comes from. They haven't been around long enough, their designs haven't had the chance to improve over time. They have neither the attention to detail, nor consistency, nor history to really justify that price right there. Their in-house designs are just bad, and even the good knives that they do make are way overpriced. Like, Spartan is in a weird place right now. Like, they're a new kid on the block, they're making rookie mistakes, but they somehow managed to convince people that they're basically in the major leagues already. They just burst into a scene, won a few awards, and everyone believes that they're a top-end manufacturer. They charge top-end prices, but their build quality, attention to detail, and consistency, it's all just not there. And I'm just not just talking about the Harzi folder here. I've tried every single model of folder that they've made so far, and it's an issue throughout their entire lineup. And I love and support them, but I just can't help but think that something is off here. Like, they can't do this forever, you know what I mean? Like, this just can't be sustainable. 
Like the sooner people realize the facade, the sooner they're going to fail. And that's actually the last thing I want because I actually really do want them to succeed. Because if I had to describe Spartan to a random person out there, I could honestly say, here is a relatively new American company with a few Blade Show awards under their belt, selling high-end knives with the backing of Bill Harsey as one of their main designers. That is one hell of a description. Other companies wish they could say that about themselves. Like, these guys can be the next Chris Reeve, but only if they keep improving and upping both their quality and consistency. Like, I want them to become the company they are claiming to be. The one that everyone seems to already think they are. But the thing is, I can only review what's in front of me right now in the present day. So I guess this will wrap things up. So here is what I think about the Spartan Blades Harsey folder. It's a knife I recommend, but that recommendation comes with an asterisk that leads to a big old paragraph of fine print at the bottom. It's a great, but flawed knife. It's the best thing that Spartan makes, but also probably the most expensive production knife on your to-buy list. But what sets it apart from the rest of their lineup, and apart from what, from even other high-end production knives in general, is that it has a near-perfect design. Honestly, two small tweaks and the thing's basically flawless, but it does everything it sets out to do. You look at some of the other knives in their catalog, like the Acrobus, the Kranos, the Nymph, none of those hold a candle to this. Those are amateurish next to this one, this design. And, I mean, I bought and traded for four of these Harzies. What more of an endorsement do you need? But it's not perfect, but neither was Strider back then, and I still fell in love with them. So I recommend this one, but only if you know that you're not getting perfection here. And that's actually something I'm fine with. I'm a weird breed of collector. I can forgive construction flaws if a design is good enough to make up for it. Like, I'm realistic about what I personally put my stuff through. Centering's not important on a user. And I'll never even fail a decent lock, even if it has some side to side, to side or up and down play. The only thing those really affect is your resale value. There are limits, though. Like, if the damn thing has blade rub or lock rock that makes it sound like a maraca, it goes straight back to a maker. But every Harzi I've had has been well within my limits. And I'm telling you all this just so you know from what perspective this review is being shot from. If you're not the same way, then adjust accordingly. Like, I'm sure some of these cons out here are just outright deal breakers for some of you. And, like, you, you'll just nail a knife to a cross for bad centering at $500, and that's alright. I understand and I respect that. That's why I pointed all of them out, I didn't sugarcoat a damn thing, I tells it like I sees it. I give you guys the full story when you come to one of my reviews. But understand you are getting my take here. And I recommend trying out a Harzi for yourself. It's a flawed knife, but it still manages to shine despite it. It's become one of my favorite carry knives in the months that I've had it. It carries well, it feels great in hand, has a great action. And just well done to Bill Harzi. Spartan, you have some catching up to do. This is an incredible design, and I hope it stays your flagship model. Right now, the ball's in your court. You need to keep improving so that you can meet Mr. Harzi halfway. And I look forward to buying my fifth Harzi folder after I see some improvements. But to you guys out there, the next time you're thinking about um, buying another high-end production knife, give the Harzi a try. Is it perfect? No. Just flat out, no. Is it better built and better QC than the competition? Not in the slightest. Is it expensive? Yes, very. Is it worth the price? That's going to be the big question here, and only you can really answer that one. You guys know my answer. I mean, I bought, I bought four of them. I mean, I'm sure you guys can take a wild guess, but the thing is, I don't know you, and I can't think for you. But you know what? This is a 100% American company working with a knife-making legend to get you a knife that I think is worth your time. This is the only place where you'll find a design so strong and competes with and outdoes the Sebenza, the XM18, and the SNG. And you would be supporting a company that I truly believe could be the next great American knife manufacturer, if they play their cards right. But even as is, the Spartan Harzi is a knife that could serve you very well for many years to come. And I'll leave you with that extremely long-winded thought. And I guess I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm surprised my voice has lasted this long. Take care.